Hey, everybody. Welcome to the show. Today we have a guest, and we're going to be talking about how significant it is, how you decorate your office. Seems really simple, doesn't it? But it's not, because perceptions are everything. Are you reflecting you in your business? I'm Karen. I'm a CPA, entrepreneur with big ideas, and I'm the mom. I'm Katie. I'm a payroll specialist, business owner, and detail-oriented person that makes things happen. And I'm the daughter. Welcome to Cheers to Business. Today we have Melissa Cross. She's with McAleer's Office Furniture, and we've gotten to know you very well. Melissa, thank you for coming. No problem. Thanks for having me, Karen. Absolutely. Today, Katie's not here. I'm sad again. She's working, and I get to come play, and we get to have a great conversation. (laughs) I'm excited, but I miss Katie. I know. I do, too. Hey, Katie. Now, what we're talking about today is decorating your office and how important it is and ergonomics is that a word yes that is a word (laughs) it's a really good word uh what does it mean well you want to make sure that when you are sitting or standing or working that your body is properly aligned i mean that's in layman's terms okay because if you aren't doing those things you're gonna suffer you're gonna have pain you're gonna have injury and you wouldn't think so just from sitting in a chair all day but you're gonna have real problems down the road can they file workman's comp claims on that? You would be surprised. Really? But absolutely. Ergonomics is so important when you're a facilities manager to make sure that you can get something that will fit a large range of people because of workers' comp claims. You could have to have surgery because you're sitting at your desktop wrong. That's crazy. It is crazy. I would never even even think of that. But, you know, long tax seasons in my past, past <laughs> life, you know, sitting there for 14 hours, I mean, it can definitely make a difference. Well, the thing right now is, and the most popular thing is the um, sit to stand workstations. Yeah. So you can either put something on top of your desk so that every now and then you're getting up and you're standing some of the work day and you're not sitting for a straight eight hours. Or you can get a complete work surface, which is what I have, that will stand with you. Okay. Now, you shouldn't stand all day either. That's the trick. You, you got to know. This, They're a happy medium. Yes, there's okay. got to be balance. So, you know, uh, th- there's different recommendations. But you really just have to do what's comfortable for you. But you should get up at least once an hour for a few minutes and stand there and work instead of sitting the whole day. It's terrible. Yeah, I I had staff. I was sitting there having a conversation with a staff member one day, and her, her watch went off. She said, oh, I have to stand now. And I went, <laughs> I've never timed it. But you it's a, wait till we finish our conversation? <laughs> that's a really good idea, actually. Yeah. You do kind of get in the zone. Yeah, one of them Fitbits or whatever, but it would tell us she was, she said, I've been sitting too long. That is a really good idea. I, I probably should do that. I mean, <laughs> I have all the great office furniture at my office, of course. So I want I one that do says, it. don't go to the refrigerator or walk around the block. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they actually make a desk now that's a treadmill. So you can be walking and working. Oh, I'm so glad I sold my business. <laughs> <laughs> I particularly don't like that one. I feel like it would be hard to concentrate. But, you know, there are actually a lot of free like if you don't want to go out there and buy all new office furniture of course i would love it if you did but you don't even need to so that's that's what's key for your listeners if you they're sitting at their office right now and they're maybe their neck is hurting and it's um it's because of the way that you're sitting at your computer now do you guys go in and help people do that i can definitely if somebody comes in i'm the one at the store that has the most ergonomic training because I worked for a large-scale office furniture manufacturer uh, before. I didn't know that. Yeah, I did. I made you perfect for your job. Oh, now. my gosh. It wasn't even just being born into the McAleer family. <laughs> I actually got away for a very long time and did not do anything related to office furniture. But in 2009, found myself in the office furniture industry. I lived in Dallas, Texas. But I worked for All Steel, which was based in Iowa. Oh, okay. So you... Just come back home and you fit right in. After about three years, yeah, the dad and my um, brother David, who was running the Pensacola store, said, hey, you know, you would actually be perfect to come do this. And I said, oh, well, all right, if I can run the whole show, count me in. There you go. So that's how that happened. But I had a lot of ergonomic training at All Steel. They, are, they manufacture cubicle systems or what we call systems furniture and they and chairs and seating and all that kind of good stuff. But when I first started with them, I was sitting completely wrong, and I was having a lot of neck pain. 
Okay. And so in, the, in this in the place where you were trying to fix that for other people. Yes. Okay. Well, <laughs> I did just start. And I didn't know anything about the office furniture in- industry. I had never worked in it before. You knew dad just went off to work because Matt Clear's office furniture has been in business for 40 years. That is true. We've been here for, since 1979. I've had the pleasure of meeting your dad twice. And the first time was at a SEC championship game in Atlanta, <laughs> Georgia. <laughs> yep. Alabama game. It was. No doubt. It was. And it was the year Tebow beat us. Bad. <laughs> so, oh, so but sad day. Your dad's such a nice guy. And he did start this from scratch. And it's it's a hometown staple. And, you know, I'm not doing this to promote McAleer's, even though I've used you guys many a times, just because the satisfaction. And one of the points of the show today is the reflection of you. If you want people to buy into you, then everything around you needs to reflect you. Absolutely. And that's kind of hard to do. So when I was in an old building and it was very traditional, the warm colors, you know, if it had been 30 years ago, it would have had green shag carpet. You know what I mean? (laughs) And maroon. Right. So when I moved into the new office, they said, oh, you like traditional? I said, do not put anything traditional in here. Mm -hmm. I want it for the millennials. And they go, why? And I said, because if you think about it, who's your next customer? If you always keep that in mind, who was your next customer? I went, my clients are dying off. God forbid. <laughs> but who's going to be my next? Who's the next entrepreneur? Who's that? So that's who you want to. I want to reflect me, but I want my customers, the customers that I want to feel good. Absolutely. And so when somebody walks in your door and they go, I don't know what I want. What do you do? How do you help them? Well, first of all. I hired people to do that. I love that. <laughs> you know, this because is my favorite answer. I tell people who come in and ask for me to help them with furniture, I'm like, you know, I look at spreadsheets most of the day, and I'm not a trained interior designer, but I have a great staff that are. I have three amazing interior designers on staff who went to school for this and work in it every day. And actually, have a passion for it. I mean, Leah, my salesperson, I've never seen anybody get so excited about furniture in my life, even my family. So that's her talent. I mean, it's just, it's innate. Oh, that's cool. It's amazing. So when they take somebody like that, they start by asking them what industry they're in. I mean, if you come in and you're a banker or a lawyer or you want that traditional look, we're going to have that for you and we're going to help you do it even though it may not be her taste. Like Leah, for example, loves mid-century everything, but she's not going to force that on you. But if your office is contemporary, if you're like this wonderful place, the container yard, and you want a more funky, yeah, you know, uh, contemporary look, a more modern look, she's going to help you do that too. So she's going to try to get at the heart of A, who are the customers you're trying to attract and what kind of industry you're in and what look you're going for. And a lot of people really aren't good at it. I've not. I mean, I tell you what, we moved in my house. I have not painted a wall. (laughs) I don't have curtains. My furniture, where it's sitting, has sat there since we moved in, and it won't be moved. (laughs) That bed won't go anywhere else in that room. It's perfect. It's perfect. perfect. Well, even I take pictures at my house and bring them into work (laughs) and get their advice and like, can I buy this accessory to go on this? Because I need help. And that's not what we do. So many people can't see the finished product when they can. If you just buy all these pieces, they're going to go together and it's going to look amazing and your clients are going to be so impressed. I mean, that is so important is the perception that everybody else has. You want them to feel like arms are wrapping around them or if they like a cleaner look. What are you trying to sell people is one thing. But that relationship, that wrap around, I feel good when I go here is so important. And I think furniture has a big part of that. Yeah, they absolutely do. You know, in talking about that, do you see older companies not realizing that how big of a factor it is? I think some older companies and some beginning companies and newer companies also just forget how important it is to carry the branding throughout the user experience. I mean, their customer experience. So if you have a really cool logo and, you know, you're excited about putting that brand out there, but you come into the office and it doesn't feel like that. Does it reflect you? Yes. It doesn't reflect that branding. Then they're going to just leave confused. So you have to carry that through and you can do that in office furniture. We've gone from green shag carpet to streamline millennial. Mm -hmm. 
if a company's been in business 40 years, here's another factor I think people possibly take away is how do you move with the times? You know, it's hard enough staying in business, but to stay in business over different generations, different genres, what do you call them? Venues, whatever. Yeah. Genres. Yeah. yeah, that's it. <laughs> and, you know, how do you how do you do that? Well, I think you get good people that, I don't know, have the versatility. Basically, you guys have maintained a brand for right. over 40 years. Right. That's not easily accomplished. No, it isn't. What my dad did in the 80s, going on TV all the time when there were only three channels and you had to watch commercials. I don't know if you remember that time. That was lovely. <laughs> I, I know. I'm so impatient now and I'm definitely a cord cutter. So that doesn't appeal to me anymore. And he did newspaper. Well, in 2012, when I came on board, we were still doing that. And now we do different things. A lot of Google AdWords, SEM, SEO, social media is huge, of yes. course, email marketing. We don't do any more TV. We don't do any more newspaper. I mean, it's just not where we feel it's at, but we can maintain the brand by going into these other avenues that weren't available. I think the adage of, but that's how we've always done it. Mm -hmm. You know, it sticks, especially the older we get. It's just easier that way. And I do think you have to change or you die. Well, I think it was a hard transition in some ways. And dad and I still talk about it because he really misses being on TV. Not him personally, but he misses seeing McAleer's on TV. That's because he's watching TV, but the next set of customers, are are they watching TV? I, I personally see my dollars uh, better spent somewhere else. Who does your marketing? M- myself. And I have a marketing assistant page. In-house. It's time consuming, isn't it? It is, but it is more one of those things that is more time consuming up front. So we had a company that did our SEM, our search engine marketing for two years. And I asked a lot of questions and I made them explain everything because I didn't know anything about it. That was back in 2014. But I took a very expensive class is what I call (laughs) having them do it for me. And then once they did that, I kind of saw what they did. And then, you know, YouTube is a great education. We went online, both Paige and I, and we taught it to ourselves. You can look up anything on YouTube. Seriously. It's how I learned Excel. I mean, I never took that in college, but I know it like the back of my hand now because I went on YouTube. So it's really possible, and you spend a lot of time up front, but then it makes it really worth it. I got three, four times the results, better results, at half the money after I learned all that. That's cool. That is very cool. And now the maintenance isn't so bad. So you go in there, you tweak it once a month, you look at your keywords, your negative keywords, and you see what you're doing, and then then you're done. I think that one thing I have noticed, and this is kind of how we met and became friends, was instead of people going to McAleer's, you have brought McAleer's out to everybody else. And you've done that through the chamber, and you've done that through, you're teaching a class tonight. Yes. Tell, well, tell about that. That's I keep, cool. I keep getting asked to do these things. I'm like, I'm not really an expert, but I'm talking about marketing to the my Minority Business Accelerator done at USA through oh, the cool. Mitchell College of Business. But last year, I taught a, was a guest lecturer in a family business class out at the Mitchell College of Business as well. And I think... They don't want necessarily always to have these people with long marketing degrees and telling, they just want to hear from regular people, from people that are entrepreneurs who had never really done it in their life, but yet have managed to grow their business year over year and have been as successful at it. So I feel like that's been my education. My favorite slide in the deck is I put in official marketing qualifications and the page is blank because... (laughs) That's it. I mean, it's not official, but it's unofficial in the sense that, like I said, we've grown our business year over year, every year since we've been there. And I've been there in 2012. And it's through marketing. Well, it's also getting out in the community. You and I've talked about that a lot. Um, The Chamber of Commerce in Mobile just means the world to me. I'm a big advocate. And I met you in the Chamber. I mean, that's amazing. The things they offer, I mean... I couldn't have done what I'm doing now without them. They offered the Emerging Leaders Program yeah. in conjunction with the SBA. Katie's in that now. Oh, it's amazing. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm in RAMP, which is the Real Advice Mentoring Program. That's done. What is that? It's the Real Advice Mentoring Program. It's called RAMP. It was developed at MIT. I've heard of that. Mm-hmm. And it's run through South and uh, the Chamber once how do again. I get, how do I get in on that? <laughs> I don't know. Call Danette. <laughs> 
<laughs> I think they're scared of what I'm going to say. <laughs> we all are, Karen. We all are. Because <laughs> we've met you. <laughs> what you see is what you get. <laughs> well, I don't know. If they've let me in it, that's true. I mean, that's a good sign. I know. You and I hit it off right from the start. And I think it's because we both have gumption and vision and we want, we want. I don't think we either of us mind too much. And this is why we get along with Devin Ford too. a focus. Yeah. Women's conference is because we are not afraid to ask for what we want. Yeah, I'm not. And I'm not afraid of looking dumb. Well, I always say I am never the smartest person in the room. Oh, I'll screw it up in a heartbeat. <laughs> I mean, I can't even eat something without wearing it. So, you know, just because I happen to have some books marked that helped me along the way. But I do think it's about... You know, being real and being honest and having passion. And humility. Yes. And accepting. I mean, the best thing you do is surround yourself with people that are smarter than you. I say that all the time. I uh, just don't understand why more people don't do it. Uh, and, you know, give them the credit. They are the ones every that thought of it. Every day. Every day. You think I could do this alone? No. I've never done anything alone. I have alone. the best team that I've ever had this year. I mean, I, I just can't even say how much it changes your life. You develop those people. You develop that kind of team. Your life just becomes so much easier and just m- much more re- rewarding. So just like your furniture or your decorating your you know, the perception of your customer, client, whatever, when they come in, you can't stick some folding chairs in a doctor's waiting room and expect people to come back. Well, you can, but they might not come back. I wouldn't right? go back. <laughs> if this, you know, this person can't afford, they're not a very good doctor. <laughs> <That's> right? <laughs> well, I should be scared right now, shouldn't I? Yes. One of uh, my old business partners, he used to say, do you really want a CPA that drives a Pinto? No. Exactly. Mm -mm. It's okay to look successful, I think. Yes. And two, it's not all that out of reach. Right now, there there are affordable things that can make you look that way. I mean, there's a lot of options out there. You don't need to bust the bank to do it. Promise you that. Good to know. Today, we want to thank the Mastery Network for sponsoring. That's a e-learning course for how to be in business. It's going to be launching in October. If you'd like some more information, let me know. All right, Melissa, I want to thank you for being on the show today. Well, thanks for having me, Karen. I know Katie said to tell you hi. She hated not being here today. (laughs) It's okay. I can always come back. (laughs) Absolutely. We'd love to have you. If anybody wants to get in touch with you after listening today, how do they do that? Well, you can go on to our website, McAleers, M-C-A-L-E-E-R-S dot com. And you can call the store at 251-476-8555. And we on our website, we have a chat feature, or you can email us, that, or you just give us a call anytime. All right. If you go in, please let her know that you heard it on Cheers to Business. Yes, you may even get a special discount. Hey, hey. So today, uh, let's see. What's our cheers? Cheers to the customer perception of your success. Mm-hmm. Cheers to looking fabulous on a budget. I love it. Mm-hmm. Give McAleer's a call. Y'all, thank you so much for listening and being here with us today. I'm Karen. I'm Katie. Please be sure to subscribe to Cheers to Business podcast on iTunes or anywhere else that you get your podcast. Visit our Facebook and be sure to give us a like. And if you have any questions or topics you'd like us to discuss, shoot us an email from the website, cheerstobusiness.com.